Hello and welcome to the demonstration of the route editor. I'm going to show you how to create a route. So here's the route editor. This tool is used to uh, build routes and routes are made up of operations. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a route. I'm in the drafts tab right now. I'm going to create a route. All right, let's create this. First thing I want to do is I want to create an operation. So I'm going to go here. Uh, the first thing we do when creating our bike is we weld it. We weld the tubes together. So we're going to do that and we're going to call it welding. There are a couple of different kinds of behaviors you can have in terms of clocking. One is called, the default is clocking. One is called non-clocking. Non-clocking is useful if you want to automate an operation. Say you have outside processing or farm out is what some customers call it. That's a good use for that. Uh, then we'll pick the labor types. By default, the direct labor type is selected. You can select additional labor, labor types, which allows the operator to choose the kind of labor that he or she is going to apply to this particular operation when they execute the operation. And now I'm gonna pick the uh, equipment that I need to run on. I have three welders and all of them can run, uh, can be used to perform this particular welding sequence. So I'm gonna pick all three. Now I'm going to go to the bomb section. And here I'll see the bomb that I selected earlier. So on this bomb, I can see that here's all these things I need to do. Uh, for this particular operation, um, you'll notice that these bomb items will show up on every single operation the way they are today by default. But I really only want the operator to see a couple of these. So I'm going to change these to operation 10 because that's where the welding happens. Um, I also need some gloves for this particular operation, so I actually need them at all operations. So I'm going to leave the gloves here, and you'll see that those gloves would show up, as well as all the things for Operation 10. Now, we'll leave these other bomb items alone for now. We have to add some more operations to, to use those bomb items. Now, you notice over here, we have a couple of uh, more columns. This column here, this mandatory column, allows me to tell the operator, you must enter the serial number, or in this case, it's a tube, so the lot number that you use for this particular uh, bomb item. What this does is it forces them to enter genealogy. If they do not choose an item to consume, they will not be allowed to complete that particular operation. So we're just going to do that. We're going to choose a couple of these and say, you must choose those. And now we're going to go ahead and continue to add our other operations. So for this operation, Operation 10, I'm going to add some documents to this operation so the operator knows what to do at this particular step. Here's where I can upload some documents. You can enter a file name. You can browse for the file name. You can also enter a URL. So many customers have 3D drawings or, and so forth and structure, work instructions in their PLM. You could actually point to, to the PLM using this URL. One thing I want to point out here is you can actually give the the document and engineering revision, which matches the actual document that you're uploading. The internal revision will show up, but so will this engineering revision so that operators know that they have the right revision. So I'm not going to upload documents because I've done all that already, but I am going to add documents to this, to this particular operation. So I'm going to select the aluminum welding guidebook and attach that one. I can also attach documents at the um, all operations level which will put them at every operation. So in this case, I have some EHS information that I want at every operation. It's easy enough to remove this document, to upload a new version of the document. You can click on this. Now I can see the documents that I have here, and there's actually a link I can click on. Another thing that you can do is add something called properties. Properties are elements that uh, are custom to your particular organization. So again, you see our plus here, we're going to add these order details and I'm going to assign those. When you create the property, you can give it a default value and it will show up every place that it's used. I'm going to, um, we don't have one here, but I can assign the default value for this route so that any order made from the route will have this particular default value. Could be anything, just giving you an example. All right, so we'll save that. And then, of course, at the route, when the route is used, imported through an order, this can actually come from the ERP as the customer name. And it's very easy to set up and plan applications through our ERP interface, which is based on B2MML. 
Okay, I am going to go ahead and, and create this route. There are some more operations that you actually have to do to make the bike, of course, but we'll create the route and uh, we'll save this first. Uh, now we will promote the route and release the route to be used in production. So I'll hit release and this route is now released and you'll see the icon change to green. So this, uh, this route has been created and you can now import work orders from the ERP into the system to build this particular material, which is a ladies all-terrain blue bike. So thanks for taking the time to watch this. Um, please continue to watch some additional videos where we are gonna show you how to walk through the operations as an operator. Thank you very much.